Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, hope you guys are having a good end of the year here, going into 2024. I wanted to come on here, make a video for you. You know, I just did a, a podcast with a company called Lumber. Lumber is a time tracker and payroll software that's in development for contractors. So they saw me as an authority, smart people. And they brought me on to do a podcast. And I wanted to make this video for you guys because some of you guys come see my page, you watch my stuff, you don't really know who I am. Or you have come to my page in the past years, you've watched my stuff, and I've gotten great comments and great emails, and I've built a, a very good consulting business, mainly off of Instagram. And I, I really haven't given YouTube as much attention as I should. So I just want to kind of introduce myself to the people that are on YouTube. And I think the podcast that I just had with Lumber is going to be um, a good introduction. It just triggered a thought that I had. You know, I've done multiple podcasts. Many of you guys have seen me on the Brad Lee Dropping Bombs podcast. I was on a show called Risk On. I've been on a bunch of different podcasts. Quite frankly, I don't like doing podcasts, not because I don't like doing interviews and I dominated interviews and I dominated everything that I do. That is my mentality. I have a championship mentality. I'm supremely confident in my skill set. I'm supremely confident in my abilities and my intellect. And I'm supremely confident when it comes to contracting. It's all I've known my entire life as a second generation contractor and construction manager. It flows through my veins. I don't like doing podcasts because I don't think the hosts are worthy of my time. And that's a problem that I need to get over. But, and that's not a good trait of mine. But that trait has served me very well. You know, in the podcast, the host, his name is Lou, seems like a nice guy. He asked me, you know, what drives me, who is Marshall, and where is he from? And I get that question in every podcast. So I'm going to take the opportunity to tell you guys who is Marshall, where I'm from, and so you have a little bit of an insight of my mentality and who I am. I grew up in Long Island, New York. I was born in the early 80s. I was born to a middle-class family, a construction family, construction going back to my grandfather and even before that. And I grew up being groomed to be great. My dad and I had a relationship very similar to Earl Woods and Tiger Woods. Every Saturday morning, and this is true, every Saturday morning, when I was probably between the ages of four or five years old to about 13 or 14, my dad would wake me up and we'd go out on Saturday mornings. And we were always in the car. We'd be driving different places. He'd take me to breakfast. We'd visit a friend of his. Um... I'd go to work with him. He'd take me different places, different errands, Home Depot. Um, we did everything on Saturday morning, early morning. And in those car rides, my father used to talk to me and he used to tell me and hypnotize me and make me believe that I had supreme confidence, that I was great, that I was gonna be someone. In fact, my nickname in the family is the king. You ask my sisters, you ask my mother, they hated it. He'd call me king, king. And then I'd come, yes, dad. And he was instilling confidence and greatness in me since, I'm, since I remember, since I'm four or five years old. I remember the cars we had. We had a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. We had a Honda Accord. We had um, a Volkswagen Fox. We had a Mitsubishi Diamante. We had a... Uh, uh, a Ford Taurus, member of the Ford Taurus with the car phone in the middle. I remember all of these things. We had a Volkswagen Passat. This is just years and years of doing this on, on Saturdays, going through the different cars as we kind of went up the socioeconomic ladder. And he took his time to really get it instilled in me that, that there's no competition out there for me, that whatever I wanted to do, not only will I be great at it, I will dominate and crush my competition. 
And I believed it. When you're a kid, you believe what your parents tell you. And so when I'm 18, 19, 20 years old, I'm going out into the world thinking that I am the king and I learned some hard lessons. But the fire and the belief was still there. I just needed to learn and I took some really tough lessons. But it never knocked that fight out of me until eventually I did dominate and crush my competition and dominate the space of contracting in the public world's rip them and read them side and dominate consulting. Um, and I owe that to my dad. And I'll tell you, you know, I was on a tear for it. The motivation that I had was to get the approval of him and not just to win, but to dominate and, and to make him proud. And to this day, and he's still alive, thank God, and he's very proud of me, and he tells me that he's very proud of me, but it's still not enough for me because the job ain't done. But I'll tell you, there's got to be an external motivating factor for success because if it was up to you, it's not going to happen because you're willing to accept less than what's great. In many circumstances, you're willing to accept far less than greatness. There's got to be an external motivator to push you. That's why my philosophy is ALP, altitude, logic, and pressure. The P stands for pressure. The pressure of an expectation. The pressure of not letting a team down. Not letting a family down. Not giving your absolute very best and leaving it on the field. Because if it was up to you, you'd quit. We're all quitters. We've all quit at something, and we've all quit so many times at many different things. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to be great. But yet we sell lotto tickets by the bushel because everybody wants to do it the easy way because most people quit. And I believe that an external pressure is the greatest motivator. I think that pressure makes diamonds. And the more pressure you could put on yourself, the more performance you will get out of yourself. I don't think that life is supposed to be easy. The life of an entrepreneur and the life of a champion is an unbalanced life. It's a hard life. It's a life with a singular fixed focus that you've dedicated your life and your time to mastering, to being a champion. And all of that is effort and singular focus and none of that is comfortable. And... If you want to get to know me, that's who I am. And that's what I expect out of all my clients. My premium clients, I expect to make champions. And in the past three or four years, that's exactly what I've done. I've turned people from nothing to multimillionaires in construction because they get on my program. They do it my way. My way is the winning way. I only know how to do great contracting because I come from great contractors. I only know best practices because I come from a championship team and I did anything and everything that I possibly could over the past 25 years of me being an adult in this business to understand, codify, dissect, and, and fully know my craft of contracting from the back of the house to the front of the house. And if you left it up to me, I probably wouldn't have done that. I, maybe I probably would have went down to Wall Street. But I was a man on a mission, and I still am. I believe pressure makes diamonds, and my external pressure is my family. My external pressure is my parents. Even now, if you talk to them, they'll say, we don't put any pressure on Marshall. We're incredibly proud of him. He's done a great job. He represents the family. He's great. He's the best. But that's not enough for me. And uh, I'll do anything to continue the legacy of Robert Wilkinson and my dad, and that is who I am. I come from a great person. I come from a great family, and I'm gonna to continue to, to carry that torch. I don't live in the past, I live in the future, and I'm gonna carry it forward. You know, I cared about dominating and vindicating my dad, even though he didn't need vindication. You know, when you're in business for a long time, you create enemies. People don't like you. Not everybody's gonna like you, man. Get half of the country to hate you, you could become the president. Get more haters, you'll get more lovers. 
But I remember specifically a particular person who didn't like my dad. And in my early years on my, one of my first projects, um, it's a $350 million project for the city of New York, New York City DEP. And I remember on that project, one of the head persons was a person who didn't like my dad at all. And I made sure that I befriended that person. And I be became friends with that person just so I could watch him. And when he went to sleep, pull the trigger on him. And that's the type of guy that I am. I'm going to win no matter what. And uh, I don't have any fear, you know, telling you guys that and, and, and letting you guys know my motivations. I, I couldn't care less what kind of critiques come out of you people. But what I do care about is that the champions and the people that resonate with the message, they'll come forward. But I wanted to give you guys an understanding of, of the videos that you're watching, who the person is that's giving them to you. I never sold cars for a living. I didn't drop out of high school. I only know construction and I only play to win. And I only know how to win in that game. And when you get information from me, you're getting championship information. And it ain't going to work if you ain't willing to commit. You're not willing to put everything you got into it. To live an unbalanced life for a life of victory and a life of a champion. And so the podcast that I just did made me think about that. And I thought it would be an appropriate time to make a video for you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying your time off here or what's about to be your time off coming into the Christmas and New Year's holiday. I hope you guys are safe with your family. And uh, I hope you guys are really thinking about what's going to be done in 2024 because on January 2nd, it's time to get back on the field. I'll see you again.